slave punishments. Depending on their owner, slaves either got a decent punishment or were severely beaten. Some slaves were badly wounded or they had died from the harsh treatment. They just didn't get a beating. They also had gotten different types of contraptions put around their neck, face, feet, and hands. One punishment, and the most common, was whipping. This slave had attempted to run away, but then was found and whipped severely and was given deep and horrible scars. This picture is the truth of what is left after the beating. There was other punishments. Anything from hand and feet restraints to face masks. While this happened, the owners of the slaves didn't care. They had treated them as if they were animals. They were chained up and weren't free to live as the white man had. A slave owner, Jason Lynch, had answered this question. Did you try to catch them? What was your method? I did. Those slaves often make a good plan at first, so it's difficult to catch them when I know that. I have some bloodhounds. I thought it might be helpful. I bring some overseers and guns, so slaves would be killed if I caught them. Sometimes, as a punishment, a slave was branded. Branding is a slave punishment by burning their skin in order to put the owner's trademark on. Usually owners would brand a slave as if they were their livestock, such as a cow. This punishment was usually made from the overseer. The overseer's job was to look over a plantation to make sure everything was all right and running properly. They sometimes were the ones giving the beating. This is what Odola Iquiano had to say. Another Negro man was half hanged and burnt for attempting to poison a cruel overseer. Thus by repeated cruelties are the wretched first urged to despair and the murdered because they still retain so much of human nature about them as to wish to put an end to their misery and retaliate on their tyrants. These overseers are indeed for the most part persons of the worst character of any denomination of men in the West Indies. Unfortunately, many humane gentlemen, but not residing on their estates, are obliged to leave the management of them in the hands of these human butchers, who cut and mangle the slaves in a shocking manner on the most trifling occasions, and altogether treat them in every respect like brutes. Master Jim called me and Sam to him and ordered Sam to pull off his shirt. That was all the McLean slaves wore. And he said to me, Now do you think you can stand this slave? He had that old bull whip flung across his shoulder, and Lord, that man could hit so hard. So I just said, Yes, sir, I guess so, and tried to hide my face so I couldn't see Sam's nakedness. But he made me look at him anyhow. This was said by Louise Everett, a slave on Everett Plantation. This had shown how cruel an owner could be to their slaves. When Lewis Clark was a child slave, he had said that his owner had beaten him with an oak club on his hands and feet until they were blistered. A British surgeon named Alexander Falkenbridge was attending on a ship carrying slaves to America. He wrote this in his journal. Upon refusing to take sustenance, he writes, I have seen coals of fire glowing hot, put on shovel and placed so near their lips as to scorch and burn them. As this has been accompanied with threats of forcing them to swallow the coals if they any longer persist in refusing to eat. This quote proves that it's not just owners or overseers to give punishments. From the beginning, slaves were treated that way. Slaves were punished for trying to escape or for running away while others were just beaten. Families were beaten, mothers watching their children get hurt or even dying. But trying to escape an owner in their plantation could end in a serious consequence.